Welcome to StreetGangs.com. You're about to check out part two of our 10 oldest Hispanic gang neighborhoods in Los Angeles. We're in the Legion Valley home of Frogtown, and we're on Riverdale Avenue in front of this beautiful community garden. And this is kind of the heart of their neighborhood. And here we can see some graffiti in Spanish. FTR, Frogtown Rifa, FTR. And you know, this is one of the oldest, one of the oldest communities in Los Angeles. And it looks like Frogtown is still active. There's quite a few placas all over the neighborhood, but this neighborhood has certainly gone through a change. There's a bunch of community gardens. There's a bunch of new industry coming in. For some reason, they have a lot of commercial activity going on over here, warehouses. And then across the street, you got these small little tiny rundown houses. And we noticed a brand new building called the River House. It's actually under construction. So even a neighborhood like Frogtown is undergoing a little bit of gentrification. Here we are on the bike path right next to the LA River. And I wonder if the new residents that are gonna move into this building know that they're actually moving into a gang neighborhood. It's very lush with thick vegetation. Just the type of environment that you would expect a lot of frogs to be able to thrive in. But this is the reason why this community was called, is called Frogtown, because of this habitat right here. And maybe several years from now, you know, you might see less of the Frogtown Reefa neighborhood. But as of today, they're alive and well, and we're off to the next neighborhood. We're in Lincoln Heights, and this is really why they call it Heights. If you look around, there's hills everywhere. And I was always fascinated by this little walkway here because I always find gang graffiti and there's always gang members hanging out here drinking and smoking. But if you go up these stairs, you'll see that there's another set of stairs that takes you even higher. This is amazing. We're in El Barrio. Where can you get a view like that? in the neighborhood. A lot of taggers. Graffiti's so old that the vegetation is growing over it. But if you look up there on the right, on the wood, you see LHTS, Lincoln Heights. So we're standing on the 2500 block of Workman and this neighborhood goes back to the late 1800s. Around 1890, you had Italian and Irish immigrants living in this neighborhood, and it was known for a lot of juvenile delinquency. And probably around the turn of the 20th century is when this neighborhood started. It, in the early stages of Lincoln Heights, it was a small number of Mexicans that were in the gang, predominantly Italians and Irish. But of course, over the years, the Hispanic community took over that gang. So right now it's predominantly Hispanic. There are no traces of any Irish people and Italians in this community anymore. But uh, this is some real interesting Lincoln Heights concrete graffiti. It looks like it goes back to the 70s based on the style of letters. And I often find that the oldest concrete graffiti will be on, on the slabs that, that have the telephone poles going into it. So if you're ever looking for old graffiti in the concrete, find your telephone poles and you will definitely find some rich historical gang graffiti. We're on Diamond Street off of Figueroa, right next to the 110 freeway. This is another very old neighborhood going back probably a little over 100 years. As you can see, the 110 freeway just pretty much dissected Diamond Street and it devastated the community on 
on the east side of the 110 freeway. There is no more residential area on the east side of 110 freeway, but the Diamond Street neighborhood still exists, but not on Diamond Street. We'll have to go to the west side of the 110 freeway to find its core location today. So we're in an alley right here on Bixel and Temple, about a half a block north of Temple. And we just found this Diamond Street graffiti just struck up this entire alley. And you know, we're, we're just a few blocks away from the actual Diamond Street in downtown LA. But this is where that neighborhood is alive and well. This is one of the oldest neighborhoods in LA. It goes back to about 1910, 1915, when the Irish and the Hispanics were, were living here together. And now it's a predominantly Chicano gang. You can see that the demographics of this neighborhood are slightly changing. You'll see white people walking around, and there's no doubt that there's signs of gentrification going on in this neighborhood as well. And you know, most of the guys in Diamond Street don't even live in an apartment building like this. They would be living in an apartment building like this that's behind me. So we're on Bixel. We're on Bixel and Court. And this is kind of like the heart of Diamond Street neighborhood. And this beautiful mural behind us actually has the, the Diamond logo right there. It looks like a neighborhood where the kids come out they can have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, if this is where you grew up at, you got to make the best of what you got. And what's amazing is that they, the, whoever in this community did this, they really did a great job at digging this pole deep into that dirt and making this a nice stable court. There we go. block of Clover Street and this is where the original members of this gang lived back in maybe the early 1900s. Many of the guys that got in trouble that went to jail that were the juvenile delinquents of the time all had addresses on the 600 block of Clover Street. This is the original founding location for Eastside Clover. Looks nothing like it did back in the day. There are no houses, there's no residential activity at all on this block. Uh, it used to be served as a parking lot for the winery and then UPS bought the land up and now it's just completely industrial. I believe that brewery goes back to about 1910. And that was one of the main attractions in this neighborhood in terms of job opportunities. Immigrants came here and they worked at the brewery. Uh, Irish immigrants, Italian immigrants, and then uh, the Mexican immigrants. So this was originally an Irish neighborhood. The gang was actually formed by the Irish. We're on a 300 block of Avenue 20. And you can see someone wrote East Side 18th Street on the right side. And then someone from Clover came and crossed them out and just wrote Barrio Clover. Now the, the logo for this neighborhood is the Three Leaf Clover, which is synonymous with Irish culture. And it's believed that the first Irish kids that started the gang used that clover way back then, uh, around the early 1900s. And to this day, the clover, although it's a predominantly Mexican-American gang, they still use the clover and they still write clover. Barrio East Side Clover ESC in green, one of their colors. Over here you see clover number one. And then at the very end of this walkway at the top, you see ES, which I assume is going to be a C behind that shopping cart for Eastside Clover. All right, we're on Avenue 21 and Mozart Street, and we're on the east side of the 5 Freeway. And here's some evidence of the Clover Gang active on the other side of the freeway, something that you rarely see with gangs in Los Angeles. And it's crossed out by El Sereno, which is a gang that's not even around here. Very rarely do you see a gang neighborhood form and grow on two sides of a freeway. Eastside Clover does exist on both sides of the freeway, but the gang was here before that freeway was built. So that's one of the reasons why you're able to see gang activity of Eastside Clover on both sides of the freeway, because 
They predate the freeway. So we're in Dogtown neighborhood. Dogtown Reefa, DTR. Now, this is the oldest active neighborhood in Los Angeles. There are reports that this gang was founded around 1890, 1895, definitely at the turn of the 20th century. I'm standing in front of the William Meade Public Housing Projects here in Los Angeles. This is an area that's known for Dogtown. A lot of the Dogtown members grow up in this area. We're on the corner of Bolero and Leroy, right at the backside of the, the Dogtown projects, or actually the William Meade projects. And if you look right here, check this out. 1981, Joe from DT. And a lot of people think that Dogtown started when the William Meade projects were built. Dogtown neighborhood precedes the projects. The projects were built here for World War II soldiers and Dogtown community had been here for 50 years before that. So this is a gang that goes back so far that it wasn't even 100% Chicano, it wasn't 100% Mexican. It was actually a multiracial group of Irish and Mexicans and, and Jews. So that's how far back this neighborhood goes. But today, it is probably about 90% 90, 90 Mexican-American and most of its membership is on the east side of Main Street in these William Meade projects. We're standing at 215 West Ann Street at the site of the old Ann Street Animal Shelter, which has been since demolished. It actually moved to Lincoln Heights. So this animal shelter, although it has a big impact on the Dogtown community and the Dogtown gang, it wasn't the place that gave this community its name. There were city dog pounds that predate the animal shelter, and we're gonna go try to find that location right now. I'm standing on the 1700 block of North Main Street, but at that time, this was called Downey Street, and you're looking at the Downey Street Bridge. Around 1872, the city of LA set up its first dog pound, but it was on First and Main, which at that time was a residential area, and the people complained that they needed to move the dog pound to another location. And around 1885 is when the city dog pound was moved here. Once people got off the train station at the depot, the first thing that they saw was the dog pound. So here's the train, here's the Santa Fe tracks right over here. It's really hard to pinpoint the exact location of where this, this train depot would have been at and where the dog pound would have been. Every reference to the dog pound at the Downey Street Bridge doesn't give an address. But we're standing within a block of where that city dog pound would have been at. And there you have it. Those are the 10 oldest active Hispanic gang neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Thanks for checking out streetgangs.com. And this was once an old Russian neighborhood. This was actually called Russian Flats in the 1890s, early 1900s. And then over time, it became uh, Primera Flats. And when you're locked up, you want literature. You want something to read. And you want to be in tune with what's going on in your community and abroad, so magazine came to mind.